Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering .conf18. Brought to you by Splunk. Hey, welcome back to Splunk.conf18. Conf8, hashtag SplunkConf18. My name is Dave Vellante, I'm here with my co-host Stu Miniman. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. It's two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is our seventh year, Stu, at uh, the Conf. We're seeing the evolution of Splunk from kind of analyzing log files to having deep business impact across the organization, doing more with data. Jim Nichols is here, he's the DevOps manager at Improvada, healthcare company. Good to see you, thanks for coming to theCUBE Thank again. Thank you for having me, thank you. So tell us about uh, Improvada, and then love the, the title, DevOps in the title, we'll get into that. Sure. First, the company. Yep, so Improvada is the healthcare IT security company, and we provide health court, healthcare organizations around the world with secure identity management, uh, multi-factor authentication, and enable just ubiquitous access to whatever sort of medical systems that they need to get into, and we really try to enable healthcare by establishing trust between the medical providers, the patients, the data, and do that all securely and seamlessly so that we're not, security is not a part of their workflow, it's just in there and they don't have to think about it and they just get access to what they need when they need it. So I hear, yeah, on your website, trust between people, technology, and information. Reminds me a little bit of a certain software company that branding's all around us today. Uh, it, 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 is there, seems like there's a, a lineup between uh, what Splunk does and, and your company's mission. Oh, there, there absolutely is, and you know, like Splunk, Improvada has a very strong on-premises in the data center footprint, and we're expanding that into the cloud, and that's where most of my work is, is kind of managing those cloud systems that kind of complement the on-premises appliance, and we're looking at how that's going to move into the cloud and what that means, and it's, it's very similar to like what Splunk has done with Splunk Enterprise and now moving into Splunk Cloud and we're actually a customer of Splunk Cloud. Everything that we do that we could possibly do is out in the cloud and not in the data center. And you, you, you've got DevOps in your title, so maybe bring us inside uh, you know, what that means at Improvada. Uh, you know, usually think about you know, moving fast, things are changing all the time. It's themes that we heard in the yep. keynote this morning, so uh, explain that a little bit. Yeah, so the way, the DevOps model that we follow at Improvada is really like kind of a consultant model where we've got a small team of, of very senior, very expert DevOps folks, and they kind of get assigned out to the Agile teams and they're a team member that gets planned into the sprints, plan and what we're going to be doing and really kind of make sure that those deployment events or the DevOps work that we need to do is planned in as part of the normal development work. Um, and that consultancy model is really good in, in regards to Splunk because we run the Splunk infrastructure, we do all the training, we do some of the basic dashboard work and make sure that no matter what the team, product, onshore, offshore, wherever they are, we're all looking at data exactly the same way, exact same dashboards and it really kind of forces the knowledge to get shared throughout the organization across products and how we think about things. And so Splunk, you know, DevOps isn't like a tool or a thing or whatever, but Splunk is definitely a great like enabling forcing function to make sure that we are sharing metrics, how the system works, what we're alerting on and all that stuff in a really consistent way. So, you know the t-shirt, meh, tricks? You ever <laughs> seen that? I have. What, what, what do you think that means? You know, so it's like the same old, same old, meh, metrics. So how, what does that mean to, to you guys? Do you have new metrics? Do you have a sort of new set of KPIs that you're using well, to measure yourselves? So I think the meh tricks part is that it's, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago the IT industry figured out how to get every single metric about CPU, memory, disk, RAM, and all the tools, there are a lot of different tools for doing it, you know, Splunk, Zabbix, Datadog, others, I don't know if it's okay to sure talk about is, other products or whatever, but, um, you know, and you get like a CPU alert that goes off. All right, the CPU usage is 92%. Is that good or is that bad? It sounds kind of high, and you get that alert, you look at that CPU chart, and it's like, there's no context, there's no information, and you know, you might be designing your system to run at 90% if it's doing some batch processing or something. So, it's like metrics, it's like, eh, you need to get the alert, you need to know what's going on, but you really need to like get the insight into what it is, and that's why a lot of the stuff that they showed this morning at the keynote was really exciting, where you've got the metrics in one place, the logs in one place, it's all in one place, so you get that alert and you can look at it and then see what else is going on without having to like jump into a bunch of different systems and. How about DevOps? 
You get DevOps in the title. What is, how do you guys look at DevOps? What is DevOps to you? And, and where did it come from and where's it going? <laughs> uh, I think that I've been doing DevOps my entire career since I got out of college and I came out of WPI and was studying like performance evaluation and it's like how do you measure systems, get the insight, how do you make sure they're running efficiently and I think that what I was kind of doing on the performance engineering side kind of intersected with like the agile um, movement and folks getting into the agile development teams and trying to integrate that knowledge and the metrics and how you're going to run it in production into that sort of product building process. So, I feel like I've been doing DevOps for a long time and called it different things over the years. Um, you know, for, for us at Improvada, it's really about enabling our developers to deliver functionality to our customers as fast and as safely as possible. So, you know, we're in the healthcare industry um, and, you know, the, the systems that we build and integrate and support, support life, right? Like, Th these are doctors that are using these systems. They have to work 100% all the time. And that adds some interesting wrinkles where you wouldn't really think about doing continuous deployment for the system that you know, somebody's going to get logged into to get into their medical records. You might want to be able to move that quickly if you need to, if there's an emergency bug fix, but the level of safety and testing that we need to put in before it actually gets into production, that's really where we spend a lot of our time in, in DevOps, is making sure that that's efficient, that that's fast, and then when it goes from going from like a test environment into production, if it takes an hour, for us it's not that big of a deal, we're doing like, you know, multi, -week, two week release cycles or even longer, and so as far as like DevOps, a lot of the movement has been around like continuous de delivery and deployment, and we kind of use that to optimize like the test, build, and debug cycle. And that way, when we know when we get to production, that's going to go smoothly, and that there aren't going to be any un unanticipated yeah. problems. Yeah. Or... How does security fit into this conversation? Sometimes you know the the buzzword term, you know, DevSecOps is. Uh, yeah. You know, how does how does Splunk and and your practice uh, look at security? Well, so you know, we're a security company, yeah. you know, and we wouldn't really call, ever call anything DevSecOps because security is ingrained in a part of every single thing that we do. Walking into the building every day when we badge in, I think about it, our security people, like is the building secure? All the way into like what we're ending up doing in the system. So obviously Splunk is a huge supporter of that. So we've got audit trail information on all the systems and we can know not only what you, our system administrators and DevOps users are doing, but like what Docker is doing, what commands it runs and really get at a very, very low level of detail and we literally have everything that ever happens on those systems is audited and we've built a whole set of alerts around things that we know about, things that we think might be a problem, and we use kind of our expertise in the healthcare security space to then apply that to all our cloud systems. So it's like, we never have a team called DevSecOps. It's like, it's, it's just what we do. It's the first most important thing that we think about every day is security. So that's why it's a little bit different for us, but we like some of the ideas and, I've, um, you know, we've started doing some work around automated security testing on the application code, you know, running like static analysis, dynamic analysis, integrating web scanning tools into our CI CD pipeline so that it just makes it that much easier, you know, and not wait till the end before you ship it or whatever. We have it right in the development process. What's the regime for your organization? Um, you know, the classic development and operations, throw it over the fence, and okay, DevOps brings those together, but you still got a spectrum of skills. Um, and presumably you've got people on you know, some kind of maturity mm -hmm. model, where you've got sort of newer folks, maybe guys coming out of college like you were several years ago, and you're training them, and sort of you're one unified team. At the same time, you, you might have some degrees of specialization. So what have you found is the right regime for the DevOps team? Well, I think the consultant model that we've established works really well and we've got a very senior DevOps person that's on the Agile team and they may do some of the really tricky bits, but once we get out of the part that only us as DevOps can do, we really try to get the developers to do it. So a lot of that's like Splunk training, how do you build a dashboard, here's maybe a simple example dashboard, now you do the next panel, that sort of thing, to try to level everybody up and get everybody on the same page. 
Um, you know, in terms of, terms of this divide between like dev and ops, when I actually joined Improvada, DevOps was in IT. It was managed as part of like our SaaS management offering along with like a lot of the other applications that IT managed. And one of the very first things that our um, senior vice president did was like, they got to be in development. They can't organize, it, we were working together, we we're all on the same team, we we're all doing all that stuff, but just mentally, organizationally, pff, get rid of the divide, put them in engineering, I report to the VP of engineering, just like the developers, um, development managers and architects, and that's the way we've just get rid of any organizational or thought divide between the, between the groups. Jim, you mentioned alerts just now, and we've heard it a few times. Um, you get alerts, and you know, I imagine the beeper in the old days, um, now you get an alert on your mobile phone. Where are we in terms of being able to take action on those alerts, have the machines take action for us? Is that an objective that you have? Is that just too damn scary? Your thoughts? Yeah, so my first, my first impression is that it's a little scary. <laughs> um, we do have some problems that occur with some frequency, right? So losing an Amazon EC2 instance happens you know, 10 times out of 100 instances in the cloud on a given month, so there's certain types of those failures that we've automated around just because you have to as a part of just doing business in the cloud. So a lot of the Amazon like auto scaling groups, all that stuff. We've got a couple of um, you know, issues that happen that we want to just resolve faster and repair faster. They don't impact customer um, experience or user experience, but we just want to get on top of those sooner. Um, so we've started to, to automate some of the very thin, small, carefully controlled, controlled use cases so that if the alert were to go off spuriously, I know it's not going to then take down a system that was running and fine and good. A false positive is something. Exactly, yeah. so only where places where false positives can be tolerated is where we're looking to do but that you, thing. Yeah, you don't want to take the humans out of the equation just yet. Or maybe ever. For some of the simple things, we, yeah. we have and we can and we will, but some of the complicated things, it's like, just stop and look at it and think about it for 90 seconds and then make the action where to come up with how to program that 90 seconds of thought is like. Maybe talk about <laughs> it. NP complete. You know, bounce like, it off of, oh, this way, wait, 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 okay. Let and me then, explain it to somebody yeah. a second time and make sure it's right and then go and do it quick. Like, just philosophically, that's where I am. Um, to get a yeah. machine to do that, okay. So, 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 so Jim, you're, you're wearing the Revolution Award shirt. My understanding, Improvada is now uh, one of two two-time award winners. If I got it right, uh, you're a Commander Award winner. Maybe you could explain what that means and what it means to, 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 to you and your company. Sure, so the, the Commander Award is really about getting you know, other folks in your organization using Splunk looking, you know, either looking at a dashboard at a report or digging down into the data. Um, and, you know, so why I won the award was really around like our use of Docker containers. So it was really important to me that developers, people in DevOps, people in support, don't really have like a strong like network operations function, but those types of folks that they're all looking at the exact same thing, all the exact same tools, all the exact same data. Um, so kind of as part of that mission, it's just, I hold trainings, I hold office hours, I've got uh, uh, one of my DevOps folks down here today, or at the conference, to then kind of spread the Splunk gospel, show people how to use it, if they've got questions, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then, the other part of that is really um, just showing people what we can do and advocating for the, making decisions based on the data, we have it in data, you know, have it in Splunk, let's look at that to make the decision, so. Um, that's really what that Commander Award's kind of all about, so. Yeah, doing the Docker stuff, you're a bit of a trailblazer, so we're only a yeah. few years into this container initiative. I was walking the show floor, I even saw uh, some companies looking at like the serverless technology. Uh, you know, what, what led you to kind of put these pieces together and uh, you know, what, tell us a little bit about kind of the community that you lean on to, to, to learn these things. Yeah, so the, the technology trend around containers was very strong and very fast, like with Amazons, especially like the, when they came out with their ECS orchestration. It was really fast and very strong and really the, the technology trend kind of led me into it and then the developers being like, we're going to use Docker. We're going to have to figure, you're going to have to figure out how to Splunk it. So really from the very beginning, I've gone through each and every sort of possible way to get data out of a Docker container into Splunk. Um, and part of that is, you know, networking with the Splunk folks, um, pretty good, 
relationship with the, with the fella that wrote the logging driver that went into the Docker open source project and like looked at the code reviews and all that. Um, and then it's really just trying it out, trying things out, and eventually kind of got to this sweet spot now where I've got, the developers are all using local Docker Compose and that's configured a certain way. Then when we run in Amazon, it's using Amazon ECS, where I've also been working on Kubernetes for a while, and the way that you configure Docker in each of those environments is totally different. The code running in the container is exactly the same, so we've realized that vision, but the, the runtime environment is totally different, so kind of where we're at now, the config may be totally different on the logging drivers, but in the end, when you load up Splunk and you look at it in Splunk, it's exactly the same, whether it's your local laptop, in Amazon, in production staving, staging or whatever. Um, and I think my kind of favorite part in terms of like the Splunk Commander Award and getting folks using Splunk is that the way that I have it set up, set up now, there is literally no local log file for the developers on their laptop. It just doesn't exist. It all goes out to Splunk. So you can do a lot with grep and text pad and stuff on your local, local laptop and I get that, but now that they're in Splunk and it's just, it's been a great way to get folks on board with what it's going to look like in production. I know what it looks like in dev, so I can make sure that my logs are good, and I'm logging enough and not too much and all that stuff. So that's really where Docker is really, software is the same, now we've got the logging the same, the tools are all the same, but then the runtime bits, those are a little bit different and that's abstracted away, hopefully. Jim, what does a DevOps guy want from a vendor? You got a lot of open source stuff that you're working with. Uh, you got a lot of different tooling. Mm -hmm. What do you look for in, in a vendor? What's, what's the thumbs up and positives? And what, what stuff really kind of ticks you off? Well, so you know, we're, we're a key trusted vendor for a lot of healthcare organizations, so I can kind of talk about how I, I, we, if a customer or a user comes, up, comes to us with a problem, doesn't matter what it is, it's our problem and we go through exhaustive lengths to identify where the problem actually is, and so that may be in our code, that may be in another vendor's code, some third party, some open source thing, doesn't matter, we're after the evidence, we're after the facts, we don't care if it's not in our code, we're going to help our customer be successful, and that's what we would want from any vendor, right? So if we contact them with a support case, we've got a problem, we don't want any of this, ugh looks like a firewall problem or something like, get to the data, get to the facts, and if you can prove, if the vendor can prove that the problem is somewhere else, great. But we want a reproducible test case, we want this whole finger pointing thing is like, it, it's horrible inside of an organization in terms of like running operational systems, but then when you've got like Azure, Google Cloud, Amazon Cloud, Salesforce, ServiceNow, all these things all working together, like you can't, People just get to own the problem, basically, and that's what, that's what we do, right? So if the customer comes to us, us with an issue, it's our problem, and then we go from there and figure it out, and that's really what any vendor that we work with, especially like a production operational sort of system, that's really what we look for. So you look for collaboration and focus on solving the problem, not, not the finger pointing. Mm -hmm. You know, a virtual single throat to choke, if you will. Yeah, exactly. All right, All right Jim, well thanks very yep. much for joining us on theCUBE, it was great to have you. Yeah, thank you, thank you very You're much. You're welcome, appreciate it. All right, keep it right there everybody, Stu and I will be back. Hashtag SplunkConf18, you're watching theCUBE, we'll be right back. <laughs>